Hey, this is Lance from Langchain. A recent idea I've seen on Twitter is this idea of creating AI personas. So this is a fun example where you can create an AI replica from any X or Twitter profile. Now, this involves some cool ideas. One is the idea of long-term memory to store, for example, a user's tweets over time and incrementally update it. And idea two is to actually use that those stored tweets to condition responses, which is basically a form of rag, depending on how you do it. Now I want to show how we can build this from scratch and employ these two ideas pretty effectively and easily. So first I want to show our assistant working in action, and then we'll build it from scratch. So this is what you get if you follow the quick start in the repo provided. You're going to see this window pop up in your browser. This is LangGraph Studio. It's a very nice UI for working with different LangGraph agents. Now this agent I'm calling Reply Guy, G-A-I. And it really involves only two nodes. One is this get tweets node. The other is this chat node. It's really simple. All that's going to happen is I input a question. It's going to conditionally decide to gather tweets. We'll show how to do that. It's going to save those tweets to long-term memory because I want to keep a memory of this user's tweets that I can save over time. So that's kind of idea one. Then idea two is it's going to load from long-term memory in this chat node, gather tweets for the given user, use that to condition responses. That's really it. So to start, I only need to do two things. Go to my configuration. So this just determines how frequently I want to go and get new tweets using our access to the Twitter API. So I'll set this to be really short, 60 seconds. This is the username of a user that you want to chat with or create a persona for. In this case, I'll put it in Carpathy. And I'll provide an input. Submit. Gathers tweets. Use them condition response. Here we go. We're getting our response back. And the response is talking about a cool application is kind of using AI to help read books and have like an interactive reading experience. Now, where's this coming from? If I click on this memory tab, I actually can see tweets that my assistant has collected for different Twitter users. So this is what's stored in long-term memory. So you can see for Carpathy, it has 14 tweets, and I can even kind of go through and check them. So this is pretty cool. Here we go. And here we see a tweet related to kind of LLM applications and reading books. So that's kind of why the response to my question was conditioned as it was talking about this idea of AI-assisted uh, book reading. So what's pretty cool here is that in my configuration, I can just simply put in any username. I'll gather tweets for that user. I can specify again here how frequently I want to gather new tweets. Tweets are all stored in long-term memory. You can see for this particular user, I have a much larger set of tweets. And those tweets will be loaded from long-term memory in order to condition responses to any questions that I have. Now, if we want to build this from scratch, there's two big concepts that we need to nail. One is, how can I incrementally add information, such as tweets, from an API that access Twitter data to long-term memory? And two, how do I get tweets from long-term memory and use, effectively, RAG to get some responses based on those tweets? So those are really the two things we need to nail. And then we can build this AI persona for any Twitter account. So first and foremost, we need a way to access tweets. That's kind of the underpinning piece of this whole thing. So there's a bunch of different options for this. Of course, there's the Twitter API. Arcade also provides a Twitter or X toolkit. Now, what's kind of nice about this is it's free to sign up. Uh, so I was just hacking around and was able to get an API key just by signing up here. It's free to use for some uh, usage limit. But it allows you to very quickly get started. Now, this toolkit allows you to gather uh, tweets from any individual user over the past seven days. So that's the only limitation. So it's slightly um, constrained temporally, but if you save it in long-term memory in your chatbot, you can kind of have a collection of tweets over time within that seven-day rolling window. And you can kind of save it all to long-term memory, and your chatbot can access everything you saved over time to long-term memory. So here I'm in a fresh notebook, and let's start building this out from scratch. First, we'll start with Arcade. So here's some code to grab tweets using the Arcade API. 
Now, this is kind of boilerplate from the Arcade documentation. It's pretty simple. All I provide is I have my Arcade API key set in my environment, and I also just grab my user ID. This is just my email. Okay, this is just what the Arcade API needs for authentication. I authenticate. I confirm I'm authenticated. Now, here's where I pass in any user name, and I just wrote this little utility function that takes in the client, the username, user ID, and the tool name. Now, this tool name is basically this search recent tweets by username tool in the Arcade Toolkit. Now, here's just where we're going to hit the API. Again, um, this is just going to gather all the tweets from the past seven days from the user. That's all that's going on here. It's just pretty simple. And I return all tweets. Let's go ahead and give this a shot. Cool. So I ran that. It's very quick. And nice. That's step one. Now, step two is how can I take these tweets and store them in long term memory so my agent can access it? Okay. Now, long term memory is a very important concept with agents, and there's lots of different ways to do this. There's many different frameworks. I'm going to use Langgraph to build this from scratch. Now, Langgraph has this memory store that is built in the library, which is very convenient. It basically provides a key value store for long-term memories. And I'll show you how this works in, for example, the deployment we just looked at using the UI. But I can also work with this in a notebook setting. So here I'm just going to import the in-memory store right here. This is just a simple key value store that's in memory. Now all I need to do to save tweets to my memory store is just store.put namespace. The namespace is just a tuple of username, in this case, tweets. Memory ID is just some kind of UUID for that particular memory. And then the tweet text, the tweet URL. Now to read tweets back out from memory, very simple. Just run in memory store search by the namespace. There we go. So you can get a bunch of objects out. We can look at any one of them just by grabbing the value. And there's our dict. So really simple. Langgraph has this base store abstraction. It can be used to store long-term memories. We'll show it how it actually works with our local deployment, which we just saw in the UI in Langgraph Studio previously. But this is how you can run it very simply in a notebook. So now we've seen how to use Arcade API to get tweets. And we've seen how this memory store in Langgraph can be used for long-term memories. Now let's build our graph. So I've added the code up here. I've compiled it. And here we can visualize it. So we saw this previously in Studio. And this is just showing it in the notebook. We're going to get tweets. We're going to then go to chat. We're going to end. Super simple. Let's first look at that get tweets node. So in Langgraph, each node is just a function. You're going to see something very interesting. We're passing in a few things. One is the state. That's fine. That's just our graph state. In this particular case, it's a very simple graph state called messages state, which is going to contain a list of messages that's going to basically be the interaction between the chatbot and the user. So that's all the state's going to contain. But you're going to also see something that's important here, which is the store. So when we compiled our graph, we actually passed in that store object that we worked with up here, right here. So we defined an in-memory store. When we compile our graph, let's see it down here, we can just pass that store in. Then the store is accessible in every node of our graph. Now you're, gonna, you're starting to see how we can actually save things, for example, in one node and retrieve them in another node. So we access a store in this particular node, get tweets. Here we just hit the arcade API, just like we showed previously, get all our tweets. Now, this is actually exactly what we did before. Define a namespace, which is just the username, tweets, extract information from each tweet, put it in the store. That's all that's happening in this node. So you can see here we also pass in the configuration, and this is what allows us to get any configurable parameters in our graph. We saw that in Studio, that we can set those using that tab in the lower left-hand corner. From configuration, we can, for example, get the username, which we get from config right here. We pass this to Arcade API when we gather tweets for a given user. We also use that username when we write to long-term memory. So what's cool is we go from configuration where the username is supplied to the Arcade API to get tweets for that user, and then to our memory, where we save tweets for a given user. Now you can see a lot of those same concepts apply here in the chat node, which is the second node of our graph. Again, we pull in the configuration, we pull in the store. 
Now, what's cool here is we use the store a little bit differently, like we saw above. Here, we're just pulling all the tweets for the user. Now, this is where things can get really interesting. If you want to use semantic search here to pull only certain tweets related to, for example, the input, you could also do that. In my case, I'm using a model that is a very large context. I'm using Claude 3.5 Sonnet. So I'm just stuffing all the tweets I have into context for response generation, but you could absolutely modify that really easily using semantic search, which the store also supports. I'll add the documentation to the video description. So that's a very easy modification you can make here if you wanted. So all that's happening here is I'm getting those tweets out from memory. I format them as a string. And what's pretty cool and straightforward here, I just plumb them all into Claude 3.5 Sonnet in the system prompt. So go to source.chatbot prompts.py. Here is the chatbot prompt. Now, this is basically a rag prompt. You're saying, look, you are this username on Twitter. And here is the recent tweets. And these instructions seem kind of silly. So to be honest, I interacted with Claude 3.5 and kind of workshop this over time. It actually sounds kind of, it, it, you know, it's a little bit goofy. Quick tick for keeping it real. Jump right into answers naturally. It's basically trying to get the chatbot to respond naturally, not kind of in a robotic way. You can absolutely tune this, play with it, modify it any way you want. This is just obviously, you know, very flexibly configurable. This is just something that I arrived on that is pretty reasonable. Uh, but obviously, the prompt used for the AI persona can be modified uh, very easily by the user. So this is something that you should definitely modify and play with. So we're back in the notebook. We see how those chat instructions are laid out. Again, we format it with the tweets. And we go ahead and use Claw 3.5 to produce a response. And that's all we do. We pass that back to state. Again, the state has a messages key where we provide the message from, in this case, the chatbot. And the chat can proceed. We covered get tweets. We've covered chat. Now, the only thing I want to cover is this conditional ledge that decides whether or not to get tweets or not. That runs up front. You can see that because when we build our graph, we set this conditional entry point, which is route to tweet loader. Now let's look at that. This is a conditional ledge in LangGraph. It's just a function that returns the next node to go to based on some condition. So in this case, again, into the node, I get configuration. And from the configuration, I get one very important thing, which is that max tweet age seconds. Now, if we walk through this logic, first and foremost, it attempts to retrieve tweets from the user, which again comes from configuration. And it'll look and check the store, which again we pass in, to see if any tweets for the user already exist. Now, if they don't, then we go ahead and get tweets. So that's obvious. If they do, here's what we do. We check for the most recent timestamp on a tweet that we gathered previously. We check that relative to the current time, and we see if that exceeds our configurable kind of max tweet age seconds. So this is a condition that allows us to determine when do we want to get new tweets. And we can set this any way we want. So if we set this to be longer, we'll wait a longer period of time before gathering new tweets. So at most, this could be like something like a week. So say I don't want to hit the API for a week. If I want to go on the other stream, I could say, look, every minute, I want to check if there's any new tweets. And again, in simple terms, if we have no tweets collected for the user, we get them. That's kind of obvious. Or if the tweets we've collected are older than our configure threshold, we go ahead and get more. This is just a way to confirm that we keep our tweets fresh. So we make sure we have the most recent things the user has said. That's really all there is to it. This is actually super simple. So I can, for example, run this. Again, this is how I can specify my configuration just in notebook. Just pass this config dict. And in this case, I'll supply a username as Carpathy. I'll pass in a question. And I get the response right here. Now I just want to walk through a quick start extremely fast. So we've already talked through Arcade and how it provides this X slash Twitter toolkit, which is quite convenient. So we'll just set the API key for that. We will set our user ID, which is just your, your email once you sign up, and your Anthropic API key. That's all you need. Then go ahead and clone the repo, just like we see here. So now I'm in the terminal. I've already cloned. Just run this command. Cool. There we go. So you see, here's a graph. Now, this is what we exactly saw in the notebook. This is just seeing the same thing in Studio. 
Now, there's some subtle things I want to explain very briefly. That command we run, what was going on there? So we were actually were launching the LangGraph server locally. This is really convenient. This provides us with that memory store we were working with in Notebook built in. Now, it is using Postgres, and it's saved locally to our project directory. So you see, when I open this up, check my memory tab, I actually have the three previous tweets that I pulled, they're all right here. Pretty nice. And of course, this is a nice kind of interactive environment, which I showed previously. Configurable parameter, determine how frequently I want to refresh the tweets. Pass in an input. I'll ask about sci-fi books. Mentions Exhalation by Ted Chang. Dune, of course, Foundation Trilogy. Now, one thing that's also kind of cool, if I click on this tab right here, Open Run Langsmith, I can open up what the chatbot actually did under the hood. So you can see in this particular case, it ran that router first. It routed to chat because the tweets we had already loaded were recent enough. That's fine. Go to chat. Now this is where we can actually confirm that the tweets we saved to long-term memory were loaded. And so here you can see the system prompt, and this is actually where the tweets were loaded into context. And again, these are our instructions. Here's the output. So again, this is just a nice way to audit what's actually been loaded into your chatbot context for response generation. So I just showed in Langsmith how the tweets from the store are actually loaded into the system prompt. Now, where are they actually being held? If you look in the project, go to that uh, langgraph.api directory, and you can see the store is just saved here. So when we ran the command langgraph dev in the quick start to spin up our local langgraph server, it will automatically save anything we write to the store here locally in the project. Now, if you actually want a real deployment of this project, there's many different options that I provide in the deployment section. So you can see we built Reply Guy, which is a very easily customizable, extremely lightweight chatbot that can emulate any Twitter persona. We showed how to access Twitter using the Arcade AI Toolkit. We showed how to save that to long-term memory. And we showed how to then pull those tweets from long-term memory, add them to the system prompt, uh, whatever chat model we want to use, and use that to condition responses, effectively performing RAG. And we showed how we can really quickly spin this up using a local LangGraph server and interact with it in LangGraph Studio, which is a very nice uh, UI for working with our agents and also auditing what's going on under the hood with that quick link over to LangSmith. So that's really an overview of how to build this and hopefully found it enjoyable and uh, feel free to leave any comments below. Thank you.